Hello and welcome back to the Tent Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in this video we're going to continue on our build of the uh, what's called the two-piece mill vise. If you recall in the previous video we took some of this uh, uh, hot roll that had been sandblasted to remove the mill scale. Uh, we took three pieces of that, milled it down, cut it off first, and then milled it down to length and then surface ground uh, all four sides and the two ends and then put a, a chaffer on it. Uh, that video of course was all about material prep. What we're going to do today is uh, take these pieces and hopefully turn them into a vise. So let me get you zoomed in just a little bit. What we want to do is find center of this piece uh, on both X and Y axis then drill a couple holes, drill and counter bore some holes for the 3 8 uh, by 16 socket head cap screws, which is what the T-nuts in my mill uh, uh, uses. The spacing on the uh, slots in, in my mill table is 4.969 inches, which I suspect is 125 millimeter or uh, pretty close. I believe that's my conversion is right. But what we'll do is take half of that from once we find center here and go half of that each side of center. So I'll zoom you in just a little bit. We're going to find the, find the center just like we do on just about all pro projects. All right, now that we found the center on both the X and Y, we will we'll work from that center. As you can see, I got a work stop set up over here. Two of these pieces will have the uh, holes drilled and counterboard for the T-slots. So the first thing we'll do is uh, uh, start with a little center drill. All right, as I said, my mill slots are 4.969. Half of that is 2.485, so we'll go 2.485 on each side of center. And this should be repeatable, so I'll do movements. Uh, I'll keep the same tool in and do the uh, movements between holes. I'm going to step drill this with, a, I believe this is a quarter inch I've got, and then we'll go up to the three eighths. Alright, now that we've got the lead hole drilled, we'll go straight on to our 3 8 inch bit. And we can slow back down for the uh, 3 8 for this larger bit. You know, I hate these drill bits. They've got the flat sides on them, they're not always that easy to get lined up in your, in your drill truck. All 
All right, we're ready to counter bore now. And I just happened to remember, this is the 3 8 counter bore here. But the pilot on it is just a little oversized, what I get for buying import stuff, I guess. So I need to step up just a little. That is a 3 8 which is just the right size for the, uh, for the bolt itself. But again, the pilot on the counter bore is just just a little uh, oversized. So I'll go up a 64th here. And I'm only going to go down about 400 thousand. I think that'll fit now. Nope, I got to go up another size. Again, that's what I get for buying the import tools. Just remember that I need to go needed to go twice the depth of this because it to get the counter bore, it'll need to go down far enough for this to, to sink in. Anyhow, let's see where we are now. Yeah, that's going to clear. Alright, I think we're ready now to do the counter bore. And counter bores, I like to uh, uh, bottom them out in the chuck if I can. And that way you don't worry about them. Uh, slipping up in your chuck. Now, I've mentioned this on my channel before, uh, but I think it's worth mentioning again. When you've got a uh, socket head cap screw that you want to countersink, counter bore for, remember this is a 3 8 When 3.75, this measures 3.73 on the threads. The thickness of the head should be the same di same as the diameter of the bolt. Diameter of the bolt is a 3 8 375. And if that'll focus, you can see the thickness of the head is 376. Should be about the, should be the same thing. So we'll want a counter bore um, enough for this to be flush at the top. 376, I'll probably go 380. Now what I'll do is come down, just barely touch off and zero out my Z-axis DRO. I actually forgot to give it to this import uh, counter bore it is sharp. Right, there's there's 380. Let's move over a little. That is good. All right, so we'll move over to our 2.485, this side is zero. Our zero should still be the same. to have a burr down in there. And again, we're good on that one. So as I said, we've got two of these to do with the mill stop, work stop over here. Should be able to slide another one right in after I clean all the chips out. But here's what we have. 
and those sh should line up with the holes in the uh, in the mill table slots, which it does. So I'll do this other one off camera and I'll bring you back when we get ready for the next step. Okay, I've got both of the, uh, what will be the fixed jaws. Got the holes drilled and uh, counterboard for them. Now with this same setup, well, let me say this. One of these is completely finished now. I've got it set off to the side over there. It's completely finished. This one will match up with the third piece. There'll need to be a hole through this one to push. It will be tapped, drilled and tapped for a half thirteen. There'll also be some guide pins, but they'll come just they'll come in the next step. Now what I should be able to do, since I've still got this work stop set over here, is simply move the piece out. Let me run over and do a quick uh, deburr on this. Well, let's see. It's going to be outside the jaw, so it should be okay for now. Nope. This one's going to hit here. I'll be right back. Okay, I just went over to the drill press where I've got a uh, deburring tool in and cleaned these holes out and also did a just a little chamfer on those as well. Push it up against the work stop, and we should still be on center on the y on the x axis. But I'll need to find refine the center uh, on the on the y. Alright, that should be centered in both directions now, X and Y. And here is the uh, tap drill for half 13. And I think as short as this bit is, I should be able to do this without drilling a, uh, without step drilling. Now we're ready to tap, which of course, going to do this hand tapping. I uh, won't try to power tap something that large with this, on this little mill. And we're going to mount our tap guide in. And of course, what that tap guide does is spring load that. A rapid tap. Need a tap wrench with some longer handles on it. Okay, the hole is tapped now. Probably need to run the tap through one more time uh, now that it's cleaned up. Now that I got the chips cleaned off of it. But I think what we're ready to do is get set up to uh, to place the, the guide pins. And I'm going to do a little measurement, come up with where I want those. Uh, as long as we leave this work stop right here, uh, we'll still, we're still on the center position. So I'll be right back. Okay, I got all the holes deburred so everything sets flat. I was getting ready to put what's going to be the guide pins in. Uh, guide pins are half inch. Uh, supposed to be a uh, drill rod. 
and when I got them in, they're definitely it's definitely hard material. But uh, when I got them in and mic'd it, it's a thousandth shy of being a half inch. What my plan was was the fixed side of the two pieces that slide apart. The fixed side was going to be uh, uh, reamed a half inch minus the thousandths, and the other side, uh, the uh, the ridge mounted piece would be plus one thousandths. But what I did between last video and this video was take a piece of that stock that we cut off, and I drilled this with a um, what is it? Uh, a 64th less than a half, and then ream one side with the minus reamer, or one hole with the minus reamer, one with the plus reamer, plus one thousandth, minus one thousandth, plus one thousandth, and the one that's supposed to be dead on. And the one that's minus a thousandth should have been a press fit, but it's it will have to be tapped in there, but it's not as much of a press fit as I had hoped for. So I may wind up putting a uh, uh, putting a set screw in to be sure they don't move, or probably Loctite would be a, enough. But what I've run into is a problem over here. I want these two pieces. This is the one that's going to be mounted ridged rigid and it's got the hole in it and the second one will be over here and that push bolt with the that we just drilled and tapped will push that. The guide pins, the holes for them need to be drilled and reamed in one setting. These pieces need to match perfect. I've got the shortest parallels that I've got in there and as you can see it doesn't clamp but one of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the work stop off. Over at the workbench, I laid out where I want my holes. I've got a punch. So as long as we keep these together, I can hang one end off, off the vise, drill it, and then do the other one. Now what I'm going to do, these should hold in place. Remember these were surface ground together. I'm going to put a straight edge on this end down here to be sure I've got, got them matched up. Now, I'm going to drill and drill this, and then I'm going to ream it for the one thousandths under. And I'm going to pin this side. Then I'll hang it off the other side and drill and ream the pair of holes, uh, matching holes, on the other end. This is the only way I can think of to keep them together. Uh, Might should go out, just let it hang out just a little more. And while I would like this to be perfectly lined up in the end, which I feel reasonably certain it's within a couple thousandths, as long as I keep these together and keep them pinned uh, together, shouldn't be an issue with lining up. But here's something else I'm going to do. I've got my center punch, spring-loaded center punch. I won't come on, I'll come down here on this end so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm simply going to put a witness mark there and there. Now, from here on out, these two pieces will be matched together with the witness marks uh, held together as well. 
So let's locate this first one. I'll just use a, uh, a little ground broken in mill. And it should have been on center on the Y axis anyhow. All right, so I'm going to lock that down. And we'll, as I say, we'll drill and pin this in. And of course, with this setup, I'll be doing tool changes uh, instead of moving the table around. Okay, so since this is going to be a reamed hole, we're going to drill it with a 64 less than a half, 31 64. Now I suspect most of y'all are <clears throat> much more uh, versed in using a reamer than I am, but from what I understand with a reamer, you want to get in, do your business, and get out. You don't want to linger, you don't want to dwell in the hole, you never want to run a reamer backwards, uh, reverse, but you want to get in, do your business, and get out. Don't pick it, just, just do it. Remember, this is one thousandths under a half. And these pins uh, were cut out of a piece of uh, uh, 36 inches long. I went ahead and cut these, these off, off camera three inches long. That will give an inch to ride in the jaw, an inch to be fixed in the other jaw, and then an inch of travel. So this is going to be snug right now, but it's definitely not a press fit. All right. That should hold it together. Now, what I'm going to do is come over here. I'm going to need to bump that pin back up just a little bit. Well, actually, I can. And now, all I'm going to do, see, these are held together as far as on the x axis. I'm going to hang this off the other side. Once I get the tool out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm going to drill and tap or drill and ring this other side just like I did this one. And then I'll bring you back when we get ready to put the pieces together. All right, I've got the other end drilled and ringed now. <coughs> Excuse me. There's one more thing I want to do before I take this out of the vise and take the vise off the mill. The pieces in my test block, it will freely slide in the even. 
but I like that clearance with the plus thousands. So this top jaw here is the one that's going to be in the fixed position. So before I take it out, I'm going to take the reamer that is plus one thousandths and only ream half inch deep. I'm sorry, one inch deep. So we'll bring the head back down pretty close. And I'll just touch that off and zero out the, the uh, Z axis. What I want to do is go down one inch, which is the thickness of this uh, uh, top jaw, which of course again is going to be the fixed one. And I was talking about the reamers earlier about getting in, doing your business, and getting out. Of course, they should have plenty of lube on them too. So we'll go one inch. Now this one I can take it back out by hand. So we'll do the same thing. We'll come down to it, get centered up on it. And we don't have to worry about it hanging over the edge now because we're only again we're only going one inch. And what we should have now is a, a good easy slip fit in this jaw and tight in the bottom jaw. So I'm going to get these pieces deburred, get them cleaned up, uh, get the mill cleaned up, get this vise off. We'll put all these pieces together and I'll show you how it works. Okay, I think we're ready to wrap this video up now. I want to show you in, in the event if some of you still hadn't quite figured out what I was doing here. This is the uh, uh, piece that the only thing we did was uh, drill and countersink the two 3 8 socket head cap screws. Now when I mount that on the vise, of course I was particular about getting it perpendicular to the, to the table, getting it in line with the table, and, and screwed it down, tightened it down. This, of course, is movable anywhere the length of the table. Uh, in this case, normally what you would do is set it up approximately half the length of your workpiece. Then on the other side, I did the same thing. Remember, this is the two pieces we drilled and put the pins in. I went back and, and reamed this one thousandths over. This was a snug fit in this side, uh, but I used some Loctite on it. If that doesn't hold them in place, what I'll do is put a uh, grub screw in the top of each one. The push screw that goes here <clears throat> is a half 13. I carried it over to the lathe and face that end off so I had a good smooth end. Now where this is useful is you got a piece of work material that's too large for your vise uh, in either direction. In this case, here's a piece that's uh, six inches long. It's my Tom Lipton uh, uh, chaffering block that you saw me use considerably in the first part of this video. But let's say I wanted a piece of what I had a piece of material that I needed to. I'm looking at my parallels that I needed to get to the entire surface up here. I can take a set of parallels, put under here, and then just tighten the workpiece in as such. Now I was particular when I did this piece to use the squares as well on that. So that would allow me to get to this full surface up here. I don't have that level, so I don't have it down on the parallels, do I? Okay, that's better. So that would allow me to fly cut it, 
uh, face, uh, not face mill, yeah, face mill it. Whatever I needed to do to the whole surface without having to worry about toe clamps holding it down. Another use for this. When I made this piece right here, I had to do some creative holding here on the uh, mill table to get this 45 out. Had I had this and really need two of these blocks, you saw me make this block in a previous video, but I could easily just set that in. Again, I would need a matching pair of these blocks. And then I've got a flat surface right here, <clears throat> or excuse me, I've got a surface at 45 degree angle that I could have easily milled out uh, this groove or this slot in. So I hope you get, I hope you understand what this is for and, and see the use of it. I know I'm going to get plenty of use out of it. And most importantly, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.